Hi, Floss Tube. How are you? Julia here, Julicious, coming to you on April Fool's Day, 2019. Um, you know how I said I was going to try to do one video a month? Well, you know, plans, best laid, all that. Um, so this is going to be sort of a February and March uh, wrap up and I'm hoping I'll be able to chat with you either at the, if not the end of this month, the very beginning of May, um, the first week in May is finals week for me. So we'll just kind of see, we'll play that by ear. Um, I was taking notes for this video and I thought, oh, it's not going to be that long. And now I'm looking around me at all the stuff and I'm thinking it might be slightly longer. I don't know. We'll, we'll just go with it. So, yeah. So school has been busy. It's been okay, but it's been busy. Um, I was able to register officially for my first actual bona fide, honest to God, nursing class, which begins late August. So yay! That was, that was a bit of a nail biter. Um, I got an email from my advisor in February, March? late February, saying, yeah, eligible for the nursing program. Awesome, good job, great. I'm not the only one, obviously, and there are only 20 seats in this introductory class. So, when registration time came around, it's like, okay, registration opens March March 28, midnight. All right, stay up late. You know, get my, my clicking finger ready and we'll just, whatever happens, happens. At that point, you just gotta be zen about it. I either get in or I get waitlisted. Well, I think what happened, having talked to Josh about it, is that the server that the school's website runs on was probably confused by daylight savings time. And so no one could actually register for any classes at all anywhere until like 1.30 in the morning. And I had to get up for class. So what ended up happening around 12, 40, um, cause I was alternately falling asleep in my chair and just like, just so anxious. And Josh said, go to bed. I don't go to bed till like two anyway. I'll do it. Get you a partner like that. So got in. <laughs> um, and it was really weird. Josh said, you know, he, the register button actually became active and he clicked on it and it's like loading, 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 loading. And when he had clicked the button, there were like 18 seats in the 20 seat class available. And when the loading screen stopped and um, he went back to the class page, there were like five seats left. I got in, but like everyone was doing the same thing at the same time. So that was slow and scary, but we did it. Yay. <sighs> um, what else? Spring break was not this past week, but the week before. I had to study for an exam, so it wasn't that much of a break, but we did get to go hiking. Um, the day before classes started again was a gorgeous day in Philadelphia and um, got together with my sister and her girlfriend and we just went out 
and hiked and hiked and hiked and it was great. So that was a nice way to kind of round off a kind of stressful break. And the exam went well, so. Uh, what else? So quite a few of you left comments on my last video and I'm a loser and haven't responded to them yet. So I'm gonna to respond to some of them now. Um, Calico, Christine, hi, I still owe you a giveaway package from last year. I need to do that. I'm sorry, I'm terrible. I will make a note to do that this week, I hope. Sorry. Christine wanted to know uh, if I finished the mirror with the lady raking leaves. So that was autumn in my garden. And she has the pattern and she'd like to start it one day. Yes, I did finish it. And I still haven't framed it. Oh man, I didn't even sign this. Good thing I wrote down the date I finished it. Um, this might be some, this might be what I asked Josh to do for my birthday this year is have this framed, but yeah, she's done. She looks great. I highly recommend stitching her. Um, she has beads, but not too terribly many. So you're not going to pull your hair out. Um, I think the pumpkins are my favorite part. I stitched her face one over one. And that turned out really well. It was my first time doing that. Um, and I think it looks okay. But yeah, this was a nice first mirror. Not too scary. Well, none of them are scary, really, but they're big and they're daunting. And they look so beautiful, so you think they're gonna be really hard, but, but yeah. So this is Autumn in my garden and she was fun and yeah. I think I stitched this on the called for fabric. It's just a, um, yeah, you know what? And I gave the pattern away. I think I took that to my, my floss tube retreat to put on the freebie table. But yeah, I think this is just a plain, plain linen, um, either natural or undyed or, but yeah. So there's that. Uh, Stacy Jones, who I don't know, but hi, Stacy. Um, she just learned to crochet and she wanted to know um, what my favorite yarns are. Um, my favorite yarns. So, for like workaday wool, um, is it Lion Brand? It's been so long since I've like been to a yarn store and went shopping. Hold that thought. One sec. Okay, we're back. I had to stash dive because someone asked me a question about yarn. I gotta, I gotta grab some stuff. This is like two brands here, but <sighs> okay. So ordinarily for like workaday worsted weight wool, I would recommend either Brown Sheep Company. Um, they have Lana Loft, which is their worsted weight. Um, it's a hundred percent wool. They say it's been moth proofed. I hope so. Um, I have a few colorways here. Um, just, I have in stash. So they have like nice solid colors like this. They've got like nice variegated tonal, tonal things like this. This and this I really like. It's like a, this is slightly more purpley. This is like a very dusty purple gray. Um, really like Brown Sheep Company. Um, but they are kind of big. Another like big yarn company um, is Ella Ray. Um, this is really great, 
great for sweaters. If you ever do want to do a sweater sometime, um, just basic work a day worsted weight wool. This is actually made in Romania. So these used to be like my go-to like workhorse yarns. Um, nowadays, especially with diversity being a thing, I'm going to recommend that you find yourself some good indie dyers, which you can find word of mouth. Um, you can on Ravelry go to Yarnivore, uh, Sadie Ruin, who has a podcast, the Yarnivore podcast here on YouTube, um, is a great resource. Before she had her baby, she had an indie dye business um, uh, for yarn. Um, I have some, I don't have nearly enough and I'm sad about that, but I really, she makes a good product and she could probably point you in the direction of some good indie dyers. I also love, um, also on YouTube, Ann P who owns Woolly Wonka Fibers. Um, beautiful colorways. Um, the yarn is great. I'm going to show some yarn I'm knitting with here in a minute. Um, can't say enough good things. And another, uh, Anne is another person who, she's very approachable. So if you say, hey, I'm new to the craft, I'm new to yarn, I maybe want to make whatever you want to make. Can you recommend something? That What, what in your stock would you recommend? I'm sure, Anne, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure if you reach out to her either via email or via Ravelry or via even Instagram, she would be happy to help you out. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to say about yarn right now. Also on Etsy, June Price Fiber Arts. Um, I've gotten good yarn from her. I'm, I'm happy. I would do it again and probably will. Uh, yeah, lately I've been really into indie dyers and mostly like spinning my fiber stash and getting yarn that way. So I hope that helps, or at least is a little, a place to start. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ingeborg, Ingeborg cleared up something for me because I had mentioned that I read Agatha Christie, um, in January, uh, The Mysterious Affair at Styles, which is Hercule Poirot's first uh, mystery. And I was confused about whether or not French is actually a language spoken in Belgium. I didn't think it was. Ingeborg, people in Belgium, she says people in Belgium speak Flem Flemish, which is a form of Dutch in one part of the country, and French in another part of the country, and even some German in the eastern part of the country. So it's perfectly feasible for Poirot to speak French natively. So thank you, Ingeborg. Oh. And Anne P, who I just mentioned, uh, what did you say? Remind me of what wheel you have. I do have an Ashford Traveler. I have an ancient, ancient Ashford Traveler. Um, and was telling me about her her great grandfather building an incubator. And Anne comes from a long line of really clever people. So that I think is all the questions I had. Yeah. So let's get on with uh, what you're here for. Stowed you some stitching already. I could probably look at my notes and go from there, since I actually took the time to write them down. I have three finished, uh, stitching wise, I have three finished objects. I'm very pleased. I have no idea how this happened, um, aside from just chipping away here and there, you know, the occasional 10, 15 minute study break. One's a new start and a finish at the same time. First one that I'm most excited about is I finally, finally, finally finished the red and the black. The red and the black one, specifically. Ha ha. Let's 
so cool. So this I stitched on 32 count R and R reproductions. I forget the name. It was the called for fabric, and I used Anchor Black and DMC 321. And I, I'm happy it's done. The last little bit was very tedious. Not really tedious. It was repetitive because the uh, TUV and XYZ blocks are exactly the same. But yeah, happy, happy. So who knows what will happen with that one? I know that, I, I don't think McKenna actually watches my child, but McKenna, if you're watching, don't at me. It's actually getting warmer in Philadelphia, so she actually could come up here and kick my ass if she wanted to. I don't think she's going to though. Um, second thing, this was my start and finish, uh, the goat load cell that we started um, in March for Emily's birthday. I know I said this is No Starts 19. It's almost new, No Starts 19. I have another new start coming up in June for my birthday. But I think birthday starts, can we can make an allowance for, for that. Goat load is done. I did this on 40 count. It is itsy bitsy. And this was such a fun stitch. I want to get more in this series. So, uh, you know, I should have kept track of all the threads. Because I did some substitutions. The dark green is the first time, my first time using color in cotton. I think it's called pumpkin vine. It was from the limited edition Halloween box from last year really enjoyed working with it. Definitely look, looking forward to stitching with Color and Cotton more. So this is a 40 count mystery linen I got from a stitchy box a few years ago. Um, with there's some DMC in here, there's some weak style works, there's some gentle arts. It's a hodgepodge. Happy with this, not entirely sure how I'm gonna finish it. I was thinking a flat fold um, or semi-flat fold and then mounting it on a wooden plaque, but um, I need to think about that some more. I'm thinking after I take my, I'm taking one class over the summer. I think, I'm thinking after I take that class, I will um, devote time to actually fully finishing some of my smaller cross stitch finishes. Um, we'll put cross stitch over here. And then the last thing I finished, I finally finished because I was tired of looking at it and I really just needed to go out and buy substitute beads because Fire Mountain Gems just wasn't gonna send me what I asked. Um, I, th I think I think they, they got discontinued and then didn't tell me, I don't know. Anyway, I went to Michael's, I found something and made it work. My very first Chatelaine, my mini Chatelaine, um, this is the Fly Agaric Mushrooms. Um, I love the pattern. I love the design. I don't like stitching on 28 count. I, I don't. Maybe it's just this particular 28 count fabric I feel is very loose, but I just, eh. not, not a fan of this. You know, it might just be this linen because I can see, I can see stitching this on like a 28 count Jobelin and being perfectly fine. As far as even weave goes, Jobelin is really nice. Um, and I think would work with this, but eh, I don't know about the linen here, but it's done finally. Um, it will get fully finished eventually because I would like to put it in my living room somewhere. Um, I just need to think about how I'm going to do that. And I probably should have ironed it before I put the beads on. I'm seeing that now. We're just going to go with it. We're just going to roll with it for now. It's done. Hooray. Moving on.
But three finishes, that's good. I'm happy. Chuffed even. Um, <laughs> whips. I, so my main whip had been red and the black and then I stitched on the other, you know, on what the other two you just saw. After I finished those, kind of a little limbo, um, I wasn't quite feeling pulling out my next focus on a finish piece. So what I did, I put maybe 300 stitches in on the gamer. So I got this, this little bit done. Um, oh, yeah, and I started putting in some stitches down here. Um, but then school started getting extra busy and I thought, you know what, I just, I can't really devote the time to it that it needs. But still, that's 300 plus more stitches than it had before. It's gonna look like this when it's done. Um, and I also have been putting in a thread here and there in um, uh, Carriage House Sampling's Curse of the Raven, which I'm doing with called four colors because I just happen to have them, although one I ordered and it should be here within the next couple of days. Um, this is on a 40 count that I dyed myself with coffee. Pardon the creases. Showing up a little lighter, well, showing up a little lighter on camera than it actually is. Not by much, but just enough to, that I notice it. So, outlines are all done. Did the raven. Yeah. So that's, I feel like working on it, I'll put in one thread, put it away. It's a nice palette cleanser, almost. So that leaves my what's going to be my next focus piece that I'm going to work on till it's done every day, hopefully, is a Nantucket Girl Sampler. I haven't even put it in the cue snap yet because I want to show you the whole thing. Um, I'm impressed by this every time I look at it. For my first time ever working on 40 count, it's going pretty daggone well. So the compass rose you see right here, something's wrong with it. I'm going to have to frog it. I don't really feel like counting it and, and, and dealing with it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the final block of text of the poem and then... Um, maybe one of the other motifs and count over and see where exactly the problem is. I just, I'm not feeling frogging right now. It's gonna have to get done because I'm not gonna be satisfied with it otherwise, but I just, you know, it's like, I know this needs to get done. Not right now. There's something else I can work on and be productive that's not gonna, it's not in a place where if I start to work on a different motif, like for example, the text, that's not going to be a problem. So, but yeah, this is the next, the next big focus piece. I will put you over here near the cue snap. Uh, I do have some plans. I have this vague idea that for mania this year, I'm going to do monogamous mania, monogamous mirabilia mania, and work on my Mermaid of Atlantis every day for a little while. Maybe 30 minutes, maybe 31 minutes. Who knows? And I'm bringing that out to show you just in case 
something happens and I don't get to talk to you before Stitch Mania starts. So if that happens, I'll just show you now. So Mermaid of Atlantis looks like this. Um, I am stitching it on hand-dyed fabrics from Stephanie. I think it's called Ocean's Tide. Hand-dyed fabrics by Stephanie, I'm sorry. Ocean's Tide. Got my Philadelphia needle. Why do I have a Philadelphia needle minder? Tom Hanks was in the movie Philadelphia, and he was also in Splash with Daryl Hannah, who was a mermaid, I think. I think that's the reason someone gave me this would work. 32 count. Here's where we are. I started in the middle and worked downward and did her tail. Most of the tail is done. I'm working. I have been working on the pillar she's sitting on. I'm not quite sure what my plans are going forward. But that's where she is now. So that will be monogamous mania for me. We're, I haven't heard that much about Stitch Jane Mania plans, but then again, it's just April 1st today, so I'm sure this month there's going to be lots of, lots of fun Mania plans going on. That's always exciting. Even if you're not participating in, you know, the lots of starts, it's always so much fun. Uh, and then in June for my birthday, Coffee Stitcher and I are starting, I think there's always, a, there's already a sal going on, I think. Emily C, Olivia B, It Is Kismet Stitches, who else? Working on this. Starry Night Sampler by The City Stitcher. City Stitcher? Yeah, The City Stitcher. Um, Coffee Stitcher and I are starting this in June for my birthday. If you would like to join us, you are welcome to. We don't have a hashtag. Um, we might just piggyback on the one that's already started. Can we? I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'm probably going to stitch this on a 36 count. I might regret that decision later, but for now, we're going to go with it because I really like that. Um, Coffee Stitch Garrett and I have been seriously talking about uh, doing a color and cotton conversion. We'll see. I would like to, and I'm going to stitch it on more of a blue fabric. I ordered some because I had a gift certificate. Since I want the, I, I want it to be more apparent that this is supposed to be a night sky. But other than that, no plans as of yet. But I'm looking forward to this. Um, yeah, there are some interesting specialty stitches like queen stitch um, and four-sided stitch that I have not done before. So have I, wait, I feel like I might have done queen stitch for the um, hard anger piece. I think I might have done queen stitch before. It looks familiar on the little, there's a chart back here showing you how to do it. Stay tuned for this. This is a little while out, but I wanted to show it anyway because planning is fun. Um, so I got some stitchy kindness. Um, Abby of Abby Bella Stitch, and I thanked her already. She sent this a couple of months ago. Uh, she had been watching one of my videos from, I think, last year where I mentioned that one of my unicorn charts is uh, Teresa Wensler's The Lady of Shalott. And she, she contacted me and she said, you know, I have that. I'm not going to stitch it. Do you want it? And I said, oh, yes, please. Um, so she sent me the booklet, but she didn't just send me the booklet. She sent me about 90% of the floss because <laughs> she's awesome. Abby, thank you again so much. Um, and she even, in, in her little her note, she wrote down the floss numbers that she didn't have. So that was so, that, that's what I needed the day it arrived. So thank you again. 
Teachers are the best people. Makers are the best people. What else? I'm kind of going out of order here. Um, I got, I, I kind of broke my stash diet. Um, but it was just a little bit of money and I'm not going to do it again. But um, I really like Pusheen the cat. I think she's adorable. I don't know why. I just do. And I was at Barnes & Noble a few weeks ago. And uh, they have a little Pusheen display. And I always go and look because it's cute. And it makes me smile. And I saw they had this. And I couldn't help myself. Even though it's, it's three dinky little patterns. Um, and it comes with... Uh, comes with this teeny tiny little hoop. I'll probably stitch them in hand. And some floss. And a booklet. A needle. And some Ada. And one day I will stitch them up just for fun. They might be good to put on cards or make little ornaments with. Um, what are, the, what are the patterns? Well, there's the classic um, Pusheen and a Donut and another Pusheen and a Donut. I don't normally impulse buy, but that was cute. So I got it. Further, further bulletins on that as events warrant. Um, anything else? Oh, I have an epic finish shout out. And this is a couple months old. Um, and I don't think she's actually done a, a floss tube video about it yet, but she definitely posted on Instagram. Amy of Amityville, she finished her first Hade. And I believe it's called The Witch's Apprentice. It's the black kitty with the pentacle behind it. And I think there's a candle flame. Go check her out, I will link her her, both her floss tube and her Instagram below. But yeah, first Hade, awesome. Amy, I don't think Amy watches, but um, yeah, Amy's been, Amy's been having a rough time of it and I've been thinking of you, sweetheart. Um, yeah, good. Go check out that finish, it's awesome. And it's gotta feel great to finish your first Hade. Hopefully one day I'll know what that feels like. Um, knitting. I think we can move on to knitting, finally. So I actually made some measurable progress on the socks from my father-in-law. I actually finished one of them. And I'm just about halfway through the other one. I know. Wild. Um, so this is knit with... Blue Moon Fiber Arts socks that rock lightweight in the colorway spores. I'm knitting um, pattern is Old Old Joe by Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Very easy to memorize. Um, heel flap I was going to do a knot heel flap and then I decided to just go ahead and do the heel flap because I have some concerns about um, yarn. Uh, the amount of yarn and so it kind of feels like a game of yarn chicken anyway and I just didn't want to didn't want to chase it but I have one and um, I just finished turning the heel on sock two so we are moving right along hopefully hopefully it'll be done in time for this coming holiday season Hopefully they're done before that. I told him they were for Christmas. I just didn't tell him which Christmas. Josh's family celebrates Christmas. And I have been working on a shawl because I'm part of um, the Wooly Wonka Fibers Celtic Year Shawl Club this year. And they just released the fourth pattern for the spring equinox, 
I'm still working on shawl number one for Samhain. Yeah, good job, Julia. So, but I'm loving it. It's this yarn is a dream to work with. It's Willy Wonka Fibers Nimue. I think this is a Nimue sock. It's merino and silk. 50-50 of each. Very soft. This is in the colorway Spiced Apple. And I think I say every time I show you this that, yeah, like that's the perfect name for this colorway. So I'm currently doing um, alternating repeats of the lace pattern and the garter stitch ridges. I have to do eight repeats. I've done one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four. I'm working on the fifth repeat right now. Stitching them on um, four millimeter needles, so US size six, because um, that's what the pattern calls for size fives or 3.5, but I couldn't get gauge with that. So, oh, and there are beads. So it started down here and I'm working this way. And I don't know if you can tell, can you see the skulls? I can see the skulls now. I think they'll show up much better once this is blocked. But yeah, this is this is really fun. Getting on a roll. So yeah, I'm not I'm not I don't think I'm gonna get more than one of those shawls done this year, but I my goal for myself is I was gonna focus on on one of them. And the first one was just just really spoke to me so that's uh, that's what's going on with knitting right now I don't have any spinning to show you because it's been honestly you know what it is I don't I don't know if you can tell on camera um, it's been so dry this winter like I can't spin um, because the the dry skin on my fingers will just catch on the on the fleece and it's just it would be bad news bears so if nothing if, if if nothing else I have a wide open calendar um in July so I think I'll get a lot done during tour de fleece this year so again stay tuned and that brings us to books um, I've read two, well, listened to, listened to, I listened to one, um, we read one with Anelia that I really love and want to tell you about, and I'm currently listening to another one. So the first one I listened to was a book by the late Michelle Mac McNamara called I'll Be Gone in the Dark, and it was published posthumously. Um, she, it's about her search and the police's search for the Golden State Killer, also known as the original Night Stalker, a serial killer, um, who was active in, in California, uh, from like the late 60s to early mid 1980s. Um, and... What I really liked about this book is because the focus wasn't on the killer and making him, it's not like, it's, it's not like she gave him this mystique and this hype that say you give to someone like Ted Bundy. It was a very human account. Like we heard a lot about the victims, um, the lives they led, um, the effects on their families after they were murdered or the effects on them before the killer became a killer he was a serial rapist and just the effects on his victim the victims who survived on their lives and um 
the effect on the author's life as someone who's kind of obsessed with true crime, and that's her job. You know, she's a crime writer and running a true crime crime blog. Um, so I liked that. I thought I thought it was really well done up until about the last quarter of the book where she had she died and so the rest of it was kind of pieced together from her notes by other amateur sleuths that she worked with very closely and they just didn't have her voice and I felt like they spent too long talking about like the nuts and bolts of a software they used for geographic profiling. I really could have done without that. Um, worth a read, yeah, especially for all of Michelle's, like the author's insight and input. And I feel so sad that she died before this guy was caught because he was caught, what, like 18 months ago or something like that? DNA did so I feel sad that she didn't live to see that but I'm also glad that he's not gonna not gonna hurt anybody ever again so that's I'll be gone in the dark by Michelle McNamara I also really like the introduction and her husband her 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 husband Patton Oswalt wrote a little epilogue and that was well done too. So I would recommend that, um, especially if you like true crime, but you kind of think the sexy mystique around serial killers is really disturbing and problematic. Uh, this is a uh, more refreshing viewpoint. Uh, the next book, um, this was our bedtime read with Amelia for a while, and it's young adult, or slash older children, because it won a Newbery medal. If you like high fantasy, you need to read this if you haven't already. It's an older book. I think it was written in the late 70s. It's called The Hero and the Crown, and it's by Robin McKinley. Um, I know I we finished it, and I sent Ann P. a private message right away, and I was like, look, if you haven't read this, like this is like strong but awkward heroine like daughter of a king that nobody likes but her best friend is a retired war stallion like you need this this if you haven't read it like that's that's got Anne written all over it um but if that sounds like something you would like even if you just like high fantasy if you're a Tolkien fan read it. I mean, we, this was, we had just finished reading all of the Lord of the Rings. Like we just finished Return of the King in early February. And then we had a couple of little palate cleansers and then we read this and it was just, it's just so, it's so good. And it's a very feminist piece. It really deals with it. Um, It really deals with like the the heroine's like growth as a person in oh I don't even know what the hell I'm trying to say it's just so just like and it's not boring the way the author talking about how she earns the trust of this of this horse and the fact that it's a very long process but it's still very engaging to read um, ditto her learning how to use a sword, um, ditto her l sort of teaching herself about dragons and then deciding she's going to go kill dragons because in the story, um, large, big, you know, like smog and, um, like large traditional dragons are sort of like the thing of myth, like they used to be, but in the, in the story, Mostly they're smaller, they're like alligator sized, and they're considered pests, like hard to deal with pests, given the whole breathing fire thing. Um, but they're considered a nuisance. 
um, but it's something she decides she wants to do because she feels out of place and she feels useless and she wants to go and do this thing. Um, of course, it's not that simple, is it? There's, there's, yeah. Um, she, maybe she meets a real, like a, a big dragon. She might. Yeah, she does. Um, and there's magic and there's court pettiness and drama and it's very go read it bottom line yeah go go read that thing or read it with your kids it's good stuff it, it um it hasn't got sex in it it hasn't got swearing in it high fantasy violence you know if um yeah so i'm not very good at summarizing books but you should go read that one. Currently, I'm listening to an Elizabeth George novel, who's a new author to me. Um, she writes mysteries set in the UK. And this is actually an old one. So funny story about this one. The book is called For the Sake of Elena. And I was listening to Lisa, Luby's Lot, earlier this year, she was talking about it. And I thought that book title sounds really familiar. And... She said, yeah, it's about this, this, this young, young lady who's deaf, who is killed while she's out jogging. And I said, that sounds so familiar. Like I've heard, I've heard of that story before. Um, and apparently it was made into a mini series. I didn't watch that and I'm racking my brain. And then one day it just hit me. Like I, I stopped thinking about it, it just hit me. My late grandmother, my dad's mom, Big mystery fan. I can remember being about 12 years old and her saying, I'm reading this new book um, that it's called For the Sake of Elena. And Elena is this young girl who's deaf who was out jogging and got murdered. Just the things that come up from the depths of your mind. So I was like, okay, well, I got to read it then. Because Lisa really liked it. And Lisa knows a good, you know, is usually, you know, she likes a good mystery. And uh, my grandmother did, and she read it, and so I, I found it. My library didn't have it, so I went to Audible, and Audible had it. And Honestly, I have more time to listen to books while I'm doing other things, like driving um, or cleaning the kitchen, than I do to actually sit down with a book. So um, not very far into it. Um, I like this author. This author, there are layers and it's part of a series um, based around this detective. So I kind of think like if I read the books previously, I would know this detective better. I would know his partner that he works with better. I would know that cast of characters better, but you don't need to know them and you can kind of pick up what's going on like this inspector Lindley I think is his name you know he has a love interest and she's kind of like she's got other stuff going on in her life she's not really interested um, his partner is dealing with uh, her mother who has dementia which I guess I think that really just spoke to me just given my experience with pap last year um, so that's a little rough to read and also familiar um, the and so that's not even the murder mystery part so it's a very engaging plot um so if you like that sort of thing um i would recommend it so far and it's interesting to me um living in the u.s i don't know how universities outside of the u.s operate and what their structure is and so this is giving me kind of a little bit of insight into that um Granted, it's Cambridge. Not everyone can get into Cambridge. But it's still, it's, it's interesting um, uh, in that respect as well. You know, something different um, than my own experience in my own country. So, yeah, not very far into it. The murder has happened. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've, I've met much of the, the, the cast of characters, but... Still, uh, that, that's going to be a long one. And I think 
that's all I have for you today. Yeah, that's everything. Oh, no, it's not. I am going to Stitch Fest in October. And I mean it this time. I'm not going to forget this year. It's on my calendar. Um, I booked a hotel room. I'm going. If you're going, I will see you there. Ha ha. It was so embarrassing to forget last year. I'm not forgetting this year. It will not happen. It will not. It's on my calendar like five times. And it's not till October. Okay. Yeah. That's the other piece of big news. Are you going to Stitch Fest? Let me know. And other than that, um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, spring is very slowly starting to show up. Slowly but surely. Um, so I hope that things are warmer and flowers are blooming where you are. Um, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope autumn is lovely. Autumn is my favorite time of year, so I hope you enjoy that. And uh, until next time, uh, take good care of yourselves, and I will catch you around the internet, folks, okay?